Here are 10 new launches that you may have missed. Number one, Fly. We've teamed up with the folks over at Fly.io to take their unmanaged Postgres service and make it a fully managed Superbase instance. This means no more manual scaling, backing up, upgrading to major versions. Let Superbase handle that and you just build an awesome app. This will be as simple as running Fly Postgres Create and choose from one of their ridiculous number of locations to host your Postgres server. Or really, an entire Superbase project with auth, edge functions, file storage, AI embeddings, everything you need. Number two, Superbase Grafana. This is what we've been using internally for observability across all Superbase projects, but this is now open source and available to run locally or host somewhere like fly.io. Hey, that's a good idea. Number three, PG GraphQL now supports Postgres functions. You may not know this, but there's an entire GraphQL server running alongside everything else in the Superbase stack. Anytime you change the structure of your database, your schema, types, resolvers, queries, and mutations, everything is automatically updated for you. The cool thing is, it now supports Postgres functions as well. So if we create a function called like and subscribe that returns the text, like this video and subscribe to the channel, then we head over to the API docs for our project, we can see this graphical instance is embedded in the Superbase Studio, and we can use autocomplete and IntelliSense to see that that Postgres function is now available as a new mutation. You should run it and do what it says. Number four, our Python library is now stable. Well, not just Python, also Swift, Kotlin, c -sharp, and improved support for React Native and Expo, but Python is particularly exciting as AI is consuming the world. So you can now store your embeddings in Superbase and then use the Superbase Python library to query that data directly from your Python apps. Number five, aggregate functions in Postgres. Version 12 introduces support for aggregate functions like average, count, max, min, and sum. So we could use Superbase to query the launch weeks table and select the average of features we launch each day. And we can see this is something ludicrous like 15 because Superbase is awesome. Number six, Supervisor, our open source connection pooler, is now version 1.0. So connection poolers distribute requests from lots of short-lived functions or clients over a finite number of stable connections to the database. This reduces the overhead of establishing a connection, then sending a query, then shutting down the connection for every single request. We've successfully migrated every Superbase project from PG Bouncer to Supervisor, which I think means it's pretty production ready. Number seven, node and NPM compatibility with Superbase Edge functions. Refactoring a node app to run in a Dino environment has never been easier thanks to the huge efforts to improve the support of node APIs, like being able to import nodes process to make these environment variables just magically work. Compatibility with NPM packages has also been massively improved and we can now just specify that these are coming from NPM and which particular version to import. Number eight, leaked password protection. You can now prevent a user from signing up with a password that's been exposed on haveibeenpwned.org. This is a great opportunity to educate your users about password managers. Number nine, Superbase branching. Think Git, but for Postgres databases. So when you're working on a feature branch, there's also an isolated feature database or entire Superbase project dedicated to the development of just that feature. When you merge the PR into the production branch, migrations are automatically run against your production database, keeping your application changes and changes to the structure of your database in sync. Number 10 read replicas. Building on the concept of branching, you can now spin up read-only copies of your database and distribute them all across the world. So a user requesting data can hit a server geographically close to their location, which has a database geographically close to its location, meaning drastically shorter load times. If you need to write data, then you go back to the primary database, but then propagating these changes out to the read replicas is automatically handled for you. And a super special mention that we dropped a Superbase album available on all streaming platforms, which you can can check out right here. It's the perfect accompaniment to building an app with Superbase, so time to start that side project that you've been putting off for ages. But until next time, keep building cool stuff.